everybody. Welcome to my kitchen. I am going to be making my Treyer Wilderness hot sauce today here in my kitchen. And for those of you that are new to my live videos, my name is Tammy Treyer. I am with TreyerWilderness.com as well as TreyerWildernessAcademy.com. And we educate on our off-grid lifestyle as well as a faith-led um, direction into preparedness and self-reliance subsistence lifestyle. So I just thought I would jump on here. Good morning, George, or afternoon, actually. And Jody, hello. Glad to have you from Florida. Um, I am just, this is impromptu. Um, I normally do a Wednesday Facebook Live at 1030 Pacific Standard Time, but today I just, normally the mountain boy's in the kitchen with me when I'm doing canning and stuff. So today I was by myself and I thought, well, you know what? I'll bring you guys along for the journey. George, who is watching, has tried and enjoys our Treyer Wilderness Hot Sauce. This is just the round one of the process. This is what allowed it to get really good and hot, and now I'm going to make it even hotter. Um, George has joined us for our pizza nights on Friday nights when he's out here in the wilderness joining us, so um, he can attest to the heat that comes from this stuff. Uh, each batch, uh, how many batches did I do this year? I think I did 10. I got 10 pounds of um, habaneros. And um, what I did was I put 42, roughly 42 hobs in each batch. And it's quite something. Uh, so I have to ask you guys this. What is your favorite condiment? Do you guys like hot and spicy? Um, what is everybody's preference? Share that with me. I would love to know. And are you a mild hot, a middle of the road hot, or a hot hot kind of person? Um, because this recipe is uh, different every year because it depends on the hobs that we use. This year they were fantastic. Um, the guys took a batch out of my pre-batch. What you do is you uh, dice these babies up and um, jar them or put them in a bowl. I prefer to use glass because hobs leach into things. They can also ruin things. So um, I like to use glass and I put these in jars. I have nine quart jars and you let it sit for two weeks, two or more weeks, and then it will uh, get hotter as it sits and then you reprocess it and what you're supposed to do or what you can do is you can strain this and get rid of all of the seeds and the debris in here and just use the juice well right there's all your hot stuff so I'm not gonna do that so okay Jody likes mild hot good deal hey mountain boy are you gonna say hello I'm live <laughs> all geared up to do some chainsawing what do you need something yeah I'll um, need help Okay, I'll be out in a little bit. Let me get this but, going. Because the cats are getting in the way. Oh. They're jumping on the wood that I'm going to... That you're try. trying to saw. They have no concept. All right, that would be not a good thing. So I'll be out in a little while, then help you out. Thank Thanks. you for coming. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. This is real life. This is this is my kitchen. <laughs> it's what it looks like all the time. Um, so what I was saying is, instead of straining this stuff, I'm going to blend it because that is all where all your heat comes from. The seeds are what holds a lot of the heat. So I'm going to blend this, get it nice and smooth, and then I have to put it in a pot and cook it up, get it good and hot, and then I can jar it and get it in its final step so that we can get it on our canning shelves. Now, I thought I would jump on and give you guys some tips and tricks. First of all, I got an Oster uh, blender, sorry, brain fart. At the thrift store, glass top, you want glass, glass everything, because glass does not hold the bacteria, it doesn't leach plastic and chemicals into your food, and this would certainly pull it out. The other thing is you want to make sure you're using stainless steel. Last year, funny story, I used a wooden spoon, and then I used that same wooden spoon after I washed it in rice, and Mountain Ben wanted to know what I put in the rice because it really had a kick to it. I didn't put anything in it. It pulled it back out of the wooden spoon. So 
you do need to be careful what you're using when you're making this and I would highly recommend stainless steel rather than aluminum or anything else when you're heating it on the stove. I really don't like aluminum. I stay completely away from, yes, stainless steel is the best. Exactly, Jody. Because aluminum leaches into things and is really unhealthy for you and I can attest to heavy metal poisonings. It's not pretty. So, um, so you guys are aware, the recipe that I am working with today is on page 32 of my cookbook. This is the Treyer Wilderness Cookbook, Homesteading the Traditional Way. This is volume one. You can find this on Amazon along with my other book, uh, books actually. And you can go there simply by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Tammy Treyer. And in this recipe, it does say about straining it, but since I've uh, been using this recipe, I've nixed the straining and just blend it all together. So I just wanted to share that with you guys today and encourage you if you're fearful of canning to not be because as you can see in my pantry, those are all of my fresh staples, uh, my dry staples, but my canning shelves look just like that downstairs full of wonderful fresh food that I know where it came from and I know what's in it. And honestly, guys, canning and preserving food is such a simple task. How many of you can out there? <coughs> I'm going to grab myself a quick drink here while you answer that for me because i got a tickle in my throat. And I wanted to share with you guys today, too, I wanted to nudge you a little bit. I kind of... I've been, we've been sharing our journey um, this year on our struggles, and um, I really believe that the more we step out in faith, the more God will meet us in that place. And I just wanted to share a little story. Um, I've shared this before. I wish I could, but I am not set up for it right now. For canning, Jody, it, it, it requires tools. Thrift stores are a great place to get your tools for canning and also uh, being able to utilize outdoor equipment, you know, for your cooking it and, and, and such. So, oh, and thank you. I'm going to share this story with you. I've shared this before on other, on other um, live videos and on my podcast and things. But we experienced a circumstance yesterday um, without sharing details that really took the mountain man to our knees and really sh opened our eyes to what our um, current circumstances really are and what they really look like. And it was, it was very humbling, it was very numbing, and uh, really put us in a bad place. And when we, we went to bed last night, we were just very disheveled. But during the night, we were both woken at different times, and um, we gave our circumstances to God. And really, guys, the circumstances that the mountain man and I experienced yesterday could be life-shattering to other people, especially if you don't have God in your life. I really believe that, because I don't know where either one of us would be if God was not in our lives right now. And I, I think that our walk and our transparency is a full testament to that. Um, if you haven't been following us, you can check back and watch all the other live videos from this year. I've been very faithful and did a video every week this year. And I'm going to try to start doing more, especially in my um, kitchen and when we're just doing stuff. Uh, it's just hard because we're always so busy and it's hard to fit in a camera while you're trying to do certain things. But, you know, we gave, we gave our struggles to God last night and we both today are at such great peace and have peace knowing that God will carry us through this. Um, he makes us warriors. He provides the strength we need when we need it. Um, this is really rather amazing, but I'm going to share this story with you. When I was down in Georgia in 2016 in January for my surgery, it was life-saving surgery. It was a very difficult time for us. And, um, we, we did not have two pennies to rub together. We were very blessed that a dear friend of ours paid for our whole hotel stay while we were down there, which was over 17 days. Um, we were blessed that a friend of mine had done a, uh, a fundraiser to help raise money for us, and it covered our plane tickets there for my surgery, and it was covered our food and, and some of our travels. And... We were down there and we had $300 left in, in our checking account. Good afternoon, Chad. I wanted to say good morning. I'm so used to doing these in the morning. 
and we had to go fill additional prescriptions. And my insurance at the time was not one that paid up front. You had to submit everything later to get reimbursed. So we were in the grocery store gathering a couple things to eat and I asked the pharmacist how much the prescriptions would cost and it was over seven hundred dollars and we didn't have it we only had three hundred dollars in our account and I was kind of distraught and the mountain man had come back from going to the restroom and he just looked me in the face and he said I'm surprised at you you what are you doing you've gotten here completely on faith hey Holly and I did God diagnosed me God helped me find a doctor by prompting me to search things, and everything I searched pulled up this doctor. I mean, it was true divine intervention the whole way, and it was a total faith walk. We did not have the money for my surgery. We did not have the money to travel, but I knew that that's where I was supposed to be. So him saying that was a real eye-opener for me. It really, really put things into perspective. So we went into an empty aisle. Hello, Angela. And I and we prayed. We prayed, you know, for God's guidance, His wisdom. How am I supposed to get these prescriptions when we only have three hundred dollars and it was going to be over seven hundred? And that didn't include the little bit of food that we got for ourselves. So we go back up, and the guy checks us, goes to check us out, and he said he gave us a discount. <laughs> Our receipt for that, including the food and the prescriptions, was two hundred and seventy-two dollars, guys. When you ask, God will answer, and God will be there, and it is dependent on our faith. It is dependent on our strong faith and, and our determination and perseverance to trust God meeting us, and he does. And, and what was really crazy with that, the $300 that was in our checking account that we used to pay that bill was the money to pay for our rental car when we... Um, when to leave Georgia. It was also our fuel money and the money we needed for our baggage. So without that money, you know, we still were stuck in Georgia. So at the time, um, we just trusted and, and knew that he would provide. And my in-laws came down along with my sister-in-law and her son and um, they brought food. And, and when they left, they grabbed my hand and put money rolled up in it and there was $150 in there. My parents came and did the same and when they left they did the same. So we ended up with the money we needed to get home. So I'm sharing this with you guys because the walk that the mountain man and, and my family are on right now is one of extreme trust and extreme faith and as we walk this journey our point of being transparent is because by showing our walk and our transparency through us you can see him working miracles and if it, you can it's because you're not looking <laughs> or you don't want to see it has just been amazing so to be able to give God our greatest struggles yesterday and to be in peace today and know that he's going to take care of it and know you know it's just funny the things that were um, put into our heads while we were sleeping and what we shared with each other this morning you know his his stronghold when he gave things to God last night was our Georgia experience because through that experience he saw me walking in extreme faith but when I weakened he pointed it out and was not able to strengthen my faith so that's why it's so amazing when you have a partner that is uh, um, has as strong of a faith as you do and that you're you're living in in with the same intentions you know it, it's not an easy walk having that kind of faith is very hard it's very very hard and I just felt it was really important to share that today um, along with the hot sauce because this stuff is amazing but I want I want my videos to provide you with something that will help you be self-reliant but something that will also help you um, to grow in in your spiritual walk whatever it may be because there is truth to God's goodness and 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 he does not lie. He does take care of his children. And uh, guys, we have just witnessed so many things over the last three years. And these three, last three years have been the worst years of our, of our lives as far as what we've had to go through. 
and it's just been amazing. I mean, guys, I could not talk to you like this in January of 2016. I couldn't even hold a conversation. I would start talking to somebody, they'd ask me a question, and as soon as my mouth would open to answer them, I couldn't even complete my thoughts. I, I didn't even know what we were talking about. I couldn't walk but a quarter of a mile and that was hanging on to the mountain man just so I could get out and get some fresh air compared to walking 21 miles in a day when we go out hiking. So I, you know, I see God's hand in our lives and I want to be a testament to you guys and, and I want our experiences to be something that you can hold on to and witness and see the goodness that comes from a really strong faith walk. You know, when we put ourselves out there and we hang on tight to God and, and keep, you know, it doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It doesn't mean it's going to be a short road. I mean, there are people in the Bible who endured 40 years, hundreds of years. I mean, you know, there were some people that really struggled. And, and Job is another perfect example of perseverance. The more we hang on to what we believe is true, regardless of the muck and mire we might be living and going through, the outcome will be grander than we could have ever imagined. And I do believe that. I truly do believe that. So I hope that that helps some of you that might be on a road that's rough, um, whether it's finances, health, marriage, um, children, um, whatever the case may be. I want you to know you're not alone. I want you to know that there is hope. I want you to know that you can give God your difficult times and he will remove the burdens from your shoulders. When they start to come, woo, I opened that while I was talking. I might start choking. Last time I did this, that's what happened. That's really some strong stuff. As it sits, it really gets hot. But anyway, <laughs> um, when things start to get hard again, that's because the enemy is using your circumstances to weaken you. And I, I believe that too. That's what the enemy was doing to us last night. Um, but the reality is we have options, we have things, and we just need to be strong in him and trust and, and continue to seek his guidance and not ours. His, his way and not ours. Because oftentimes, too, when you're in a hard spot, we want it to be over so quickly that we try to do things on our own. And we aren't willing to trust him for the outcome or for the path that we may need to take to get out of it. So just keep all that in mind. Um, those are my, <laughs> my thoughts for the day. I just wanted to share that with you because that was one really amazing moment for both the mountain man and I down in Georgia when, when that um, happened. That's a big difference, $272 compared to $700 plus. So God is good and he's good all the time. And like I was saying on Wednesday for my live video, doing a gratitude journal is a really good idea because when you look back on something like what I just explained to you, um, it's pretty eye-opening. And sometimes we forget. Sometimes we get into the um, disturbing and distraught moments in our life and we forget about the good. And there's a lot of good. There's so much good. Hi, Cindy. There's so much good around us despite all of our struggles. And what was really funny is we got home at like 9 o'clock and um, we were eating organic hot dogs. And at the end of the hot dog where it's crinkled up, there was a heart shape. So for those of you that know me, you know that God shows me hearts everywhere. So the fact that it was at the end of the hot dog was really funny. And then there was also a uh, thing laying on the counter that with the light shining through it was the shape of a heart. So God shows me his presence all the time. I'm willing to look for it. I'm willing to see it. And I'm willing to um, accept it for what it is. God is good. And I'm thankful that he's in my life. Like I said, I don't know where we would be if he wasn't. And I just encourage you guys to, you know, pull in and, and walk a stronger faith walk. And let him show you what he's capable of. It's pretty amazing. So anyway, now that I'm like choking on this stuff, I'm going to dump this in my blender and... By the way, when you guys do the hot sauce, if you happen to use my recipe, we're making any kind of hot stuff with um, habaneros, please be very careful. There is a blog post on our website at treyerwilderness.com. I think it's death number 595. <laughs> uh, when I first made this, uh, the house was closed up. We had been doing stuff. Um, all day and making chili sauce I believe and I just had to 
heat these babies up. It only needed to simmer for 10 minutes before I put it in containers and let it sit for two weeks. So what's 10 minutes, right? Well, everybody that had already gone to bed that was getting ready to hunt the next morning woke up unable to breathe and having great difficulties. And so I almost killed everybody and I have the windows closed right now. So I do need to open things up. I'm trying to see what Chad said to me. My, it's not, it's fighting with me a little bit here. Bear with me. Ah, ah it won't let me see the whole thing. Jesus was fully human and fully God. God put Jesus in the wilderness for 40 days to learn. That's I, I can't see anything more, Chad, but because there's a see more button and it won't let me hit the see more without bringing up this crazy thing. Let me try. Ah. Anyway, I will look at that later and respond to that. And you guys can look at it and see what he has said. I know you guys can see the comments. I just, I can't. Let me just see if there's one other way. Nope. Okay. I'm afraid if I do anything else, I'll lose y'all. But, um... God tests, God does test us sometimes, and, and it's not so much to test as to teach. So, you know, and, and the enemy is the one who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And um, God, God is here to bless us and love us and, and guide us. So just remember that. But I am really happy with my uh, blender. I had a blender previously that I had also gotten at the thrift store and I relinquished that to the mountain man so he could make trapping lore last year. So I was thankful to find this one at a thrift store. I do all of my shopping, honestly, at the thrift store. If I can't find it there, I'll wait because uh, stuff's in such great shape and I live a frugal, subsistent lifestyle. I don't need brand new. I just need it functional. And I, this is one of two electric appliances that I have in my kitchen. So, and I don't use it very often, but this is one of those cases. So, make sure you're well ventilated when you are making this because it is something that will really catch your breath and, and it can catch your breath that bad that you can asphyxiate yourself. So, do be careful. <laughs> and again, you can find my cookbook and all my other books on Amazon at treyerwilderness.com slash Tammy Treyer. And note there are some more in the works. I'm excited about that, but that's all the more I'm going to say. That's my teaser for today. Now, I am going to just blend this up real quick. I don't know how loud this is going to be, so bear with me here. on Thursday that you'd really get over here that they would really like to see you Hi. our life has been really crazy and he's been out in the field working so he has missed being on the camera but we hope to get him back really soon don't we sure <laughs> did you need something um yeah I just got that stuff from Evan I don't uh, know where you want me to put it in the freezer I'll be off of here in a few seconds then. I gotta go round up the cats. Do you know where the dog crate is? I need to put kittens in it so that he can saw. They're actually on the board he's sawing. <laughs> so right. Chad just said hello. <laughs> yeah. Bye. <laughs> okay. I don't know what I was saying, but that was a divine interruption. That was a good one. I like I like those kind of interruptions. But we will be trying to get him back on camera. I know that a lot of you guys miss seeing him. I'm a lot more chatty, I know, and he shares some really unique things. We each have our own angle, so I hope to get him back on camera. We have some of his older stuff that's going to be coming out, and he has some classes that will be going live on Treyer Wilderness Academy really soon also. So we are hoping through our hunting season and um, when we dive into trapping season this year that you'll... We'll be able to get him on and you'll be able to see him more often so, everybody's, everybody's interrupting now so anyway the objective here is to get this well blended so that it's smooth that's what i'm i'm shooting for okay so i'm going to blend that so it's nice and smooth and then you just put it in the pot heat it back up jar it and then you can um 
water bath can this for 10 minutes and you're good to go. It can go on the shelves once you've tested that it's sealed properly. Um, the reason this can water bath is because it's all vinegar and all hobs and a little bit of salt. So the likelihood of this ferment, uh, spoiling is, is very little. Um, but it is hot and be warned. It, uh, of course, it always depends on the habaneros you're using. We've tried grocery store habaneros before and they just don't cut it. They really don't have a whole lot of kick or flavor where these came fresh from the farm. Hi, Candy. Hope you're having a good day, girl. So that was what I wanted to share with you today and I've got to get to it because now I got to go round up kittens so that they don't get sawed in half while they, um, the mountain boy is uh, putting together six cords of firewood for somebody. So there's always a lot going on here on the homestead. And I want to share a little something with you too. We are down to um, four more meals of meat in our freezer. Uh, we live off of the wild game that we hunt and occasionally we'll get chicken. Uh, so right now we have four meals left and next Wednesday starts our hunting season. And you know how I said God blesses us all the time and he'll bless us? He also uses other people to bless us. One of our dear friends just came by. That's what he was talking about, the mountain man was talking about. And they blessed us with deer meat for our freezer till we hit hunting season to ensure that we have meat. So God is really good. And, you know, it's our, it's our duty to serve people and to be good to others. But it's also our duty to receive when people want to be good to us. And that was something that was very difficult for the mountain man and I to learn because we're givers. And um, that was something that was very humbling in 2016. And it's just a real blessing to know that we're cared for too. And we are really blessed with good people in our lives. And I, I hope that you guys are too. And I want you guys to all know that you are love because I, I love communicating with you guys every week. This is so much fun to me and um, it's great to get to know you guys and to get your input and your feedback and your thoughts on things and to also share what we do. So I'm just going to say a quick prayer as I always do on my videos and let you guys get back to your day. But dear Lord, I just thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace that you show us all. And Lord, just be with everyone. And, and our audience and those that are in need. We have some friends that are in great need of prayer. Chad hurt his hand this week. Just be with him and, and help heal him. And our friend Pat, who is dealing with uh, bone marrow cancer. And Deborah Kidd, who is also dealing with cancer. And there are just so many people dealing with struggles. And Lord, I just ask that you wrap your loving arms around them, heal them, strengthen them, love them, and just let them know that your presence is there. Let them know that you are available to them. And Lord, just give all these wonderful people a good day. Um, strengthen them in their walk of faith so that they can experience the bounty and the amazingness that we have experienced, even though we're going through hard times. And Lord, just thank you for all that you're going to do in each of our lives. And I ask this in your holy and precious name. Amen. So guys, thank you for taking time out of your day to join me. I will show you the finished product, but it's really very simple. And again, my recipe is also on the website. If you don't have the funding to purchase my cookbook, you can go on our website and look for Treyer Wilderness Hot Sauce. So it's there for you as well in, in that form. Prayers are a bountiful... Oh, thank you for the prayers for the bountiful hunting season. Um, we appreciate that. I'm hoping that we will all get our elk and our deer this year. Um, I was blessed with my elk and deer last year, so uh tends to spoil you, but uh, I, I we enjoy just being out. And Chad says, Amen. God bless everyone here. Chad is a great prayer warrior too, guys. And um, we, we have amazing prayer warriors. So if you ever need prayer, um, feel free to list it in the comments. You just need to say you need prayer. You don't have, you can just say it's unspoken. We don't need to know the details. God will always know. And I just wish you a great, great day. Um, we have a beautiful sunny one here. And I just wish you great peace and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Okay, guys? Thanks for joining me. God bless.